Okay, um, let's see. Here we are um, in the shop here today. It's uh, it's the day before Thanksgiving, Wednesday. Um, in uh, and I'm, I'm inside the shop here because it's kind of cold and windy and been raining for oh, I don't know 24 hours or more now. So I'm kind of uh, <laughs> kind of confined to quarters here. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and take care of a, a little job, um, sheet metal job. It's a uh, I'll show you in a minute what I'm doing. Uh, it's um, one of those uh, backpacks I call them. Goes between the cab of the truck and the body of the truck. You know your masons and things like that will use them. Um, you know to put their you know trowels and things of that nature. And it goes full width across the truck. Anyway, it's old. It's it's cracked and uh, and I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to firm it up a little bit for the guy. Uh, he took it off and you know brought it by. Uh, and what I'm going to do is essentially, it's the corners have gone all, all weak on it. Um, so what I did was I had a, a, a local sheet metal shop uh, just you know make these for me out of uh, these are eighth inch thick. Uh, I could see this just a little bit of snots on them. I'm just going to you know knock the snots off with the grinder, and I'm going to try to strengthen the corners and stuff on it and. Uh, and then we'll see if that's enough or if they want to do some more. But anyway, um, that's going to be the job we're doing, my sheet metal job. So in gearing up for that, I, um, I took, this is my, uh, this is my Millermatic uh, 252. Um, I don't know, I bought this a few years ago, a couple of, couple of few, I don't know, two, whatever. Um, it replaced um, my Millermatic 200, which was, of course, non-digital, uh, and I used it. <laughs> I.e. tortured it for years and years and years it, it, just nothing but service never had to go in for service you know just excellent machine so um, you know so when it started to and, and it didn't even stop working on me it just just kind of started to get a little bit cold um, so I I just figured you know uh, better to uh, better to replace it you know rather than keep running it and ruining it um, so Anyway, this is my Millermatic 252. Um, so in gearing up for this sheet metal job, naturally, I normally run 035 in here, you know, and uh, uh, steel, you know, and, and again, unless I need to switch it over for, for some reason, you know, I'm stainless or, you know, whatever. Now, in this case, I, like I say, because I'm going to be doing a, you know, very thin sheet metal thing. So I figured, you know what, let me switch it over to 030. So, again, because my mind is shot uh, from all the whatever, mileage and what it is I do. Um, I couldn't locate the, I knew I had rollers, uh, 030 rollers. Uh, I mean, I still have stuff left over from when it was, uh, you know, like I said, from the Millermatic 200. So essentially I've had one of these Millermatic machines for, I don't know, <laughs> decades, I guess, more, you know, more than, you know, uh, probably 20 years. Anyway, so I said, well, I know I have 030 rollers. I just, couldn't seem to find looking around, looking around, looking around. Uh, let me zoom in. I did finally find them, uh, as you can see here. I don't know if that'll will that read. Um, I don't know. Anyway, you can see it clearly says here right down there. It's 030. So I did finally find them. So when I open up the machine and I took the existing rollers off, I noticed something. Here they are. These are the existing rollers that were on the machine. If you look, this is how it was in the machine. You know, it was mounted in the machine like this. And I'm looking at it, so it says 035. So when I pulled it out of there, as I'm taking the rollers out, I dropped them. I dropped one. I picked it up and I looked at the roller. And I'm looking at it that way. <laughs> look at that, 030. I'm looking at, like I said, 035, 030. So, I just happen to look, turn it over. Look what it says there, 035. And then if you turn this one over, it says 030. So obviously, I get it. <laughs> you don't have to beat me over the head with a two by four. They're combination rollers. So, I guess one, one groove is 030, and another groove is 035. But here's the reason I'm, I'm leading in with this, is I know I blab too much. Anyway, 
it says, you read them this way, right? It says 030, 030. And then, of course, if you flip them, it's going to say 035 on this side. And this is the way it was in the machine. When I looked at it, mounted on the, on the drive spindle, it was this way. It said, oh, I was reading 035. That's why I assumed it was with just 035 rollers. These must have been the ones that came with the machine, like I said, and I guess they give you a combination roller. Now, here's the deal. So I took the thing, and I said, well, 035. I'm saying, now I know that all the Miller stuff runs on the inside. In other words, I, again, I've had Miller equipment for a while. Here, you see, it runs on the, let me see, can I, here we go. You can see it runs on the inner. So the conduit, the drive, everything runs on the inner. So obviously, you have a situation and I get it now, but, you, but I guess what I'm saying is be careful if you find yourself in this situation. Uh, like I said, that always, at least all the Miller equipment that I've had, always runs on the inside. In fact, let me show you over here. This, here's a Miller, this is an S60. Uh, this is the one I did the, uh, the aluminum experiment with. Here, in fact, it's still got the, the dry. See, it runs, um, again, on the inside. If you can see where I'm pointing, it runs on the inside roller. Uh, now again, this has the uh, quick release as does the other one, um, which is nice, you know, nice feature. Uh, the older stuff, you had to put the three bolts in or whatever. Uh, and I guess I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to say that the old rollers will still work with the new system, I think, because like I said, I don't remember uh, I think the 030 rollers that are in there now are, um, are left over from my Millermatic 200. But anyway, so what I guess I'm saying is be cautious if you find yourself in this position. Eh, great, the damn air compressor kicks on right while I'm talking. Okay, I just wanted to wait for the air compressor to cut off. To... Anyway, so, so again, the point being, apparently you read the way that they run. So in other words, this reads 035. I don't know if it's obviously. I did it under, I brought it over and did it under the magnifying, the lighted magnifier to, to, you know, to be. But you can see this side is reading 035, but it is the bigger groove on this is here. The in, you know, again, here. This is the smaller groove. Here's a piece. Let me see, maybe some auxiliary lighting here would help. Yeah, no, that might make, well, I don't know if that makes it more glary or not. Here's a piece of the 030 wire that I'm running now. I just, you know, that I just loaded in there. So here it is on there, on the inner groove. And then here it is on the outer groove. You can see it clearly is going deeper in the inner groove than it is on the outer groove. So like I say, just a, you know, uh, 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 just a note to, to pay attention to, because uh, I didn't realize that. Like I said, I've had this equipment, you know, Miller equipment like this for years, feeders and Miller Maddox and stuff. So I didn't realize this. And I guess I, I guess I just didn't, wasn't thinking in the terms of the, uh, you know, the combination roller. Normally the rollers are set up, though you get two grooves, they're usually the same. So just a cautionary note, when you have it, if you have a Miller Maddox and you have this sort of a situation, make sure that what you're looking at corresponds to the wire you're feeding. In other words, if you're looking at 035, make sure you're feeding 035 wire. If you're looking at 030 facing you, make sure you're, you're feeding 030 wire. Uh, I mean, I'm sure, you could, I'm sure you could go one way with that. I'm sure it'd be all right to go with 035 wire on 030 uh, rollers. But I think you might have some slipping and stuttering problems if you tried to go in the other direction, you know. So anyway, uh, just a little, just a little, uh, just a little visual aid there, just, uh, just for shits and giggles, just, you know, maybe that'll help somebody. Like I said, I never knew about it. I've been running this stuff for years, so uh, that's it. All right, anyway, um, so that's all set up now. Uh, like I said, we're on 030. I'm going to uh, bring, in, uh, bring in the piece. It's quite large, actually. Well, for my shop, anything's large. Um, it's quite large. I'm going to get it in here, get it out of the wind, the cold, and the, and the rain. Uh, and see if I can't start setting it up. I'm just going to clean these up and I'll show you what I'm going to do on this. All right, so I'll bring you back. 
All right, uh, I've brought the box inside. Uh, I'm going to use the term loosely, or as inside as I can make it. Uh, you can see the, the the size of this thing. It's probably all of you know. It's all of eight feet wide, and you know whatever. It's probably two and a half feet deep or whatever. Uh, it's as much in as I can make it. Uh, I've got it picked up with the with the forklift naturally. Uh, let me try to show you what the problem is here. Let's see. Um, let's see. You can maybe you can see if I. It, geez, I just can't. If there you go. Um, that's. I hope there's not too much glare on that. It just. It's all shaky. It's all. There's no, you know what I'm saying? There's no structure left to it. Um, let me turn this light on. And the reason, I mean, what I've found, you can see these cracks in here. Uh, every corner, every corner of this thing has got a crack uh, that runs all along it. You can see, let's see, uh, yeah. You can see where the, where the, well, you can see the crack, I think, right? So what my plan is, is to use those, those patch panels, the way I should, because they say <laughs> aesthetics no longer, no longer apply. They don't come and get one of these things. And um, here's, I'll show you my plan here. Uh, my plan is to, like I say, to take essentially these and put them in here like this uh, to just essentially reinforce the corner and then just weld, you know, pretty much around the thing. Uh, and I think that there you go. That should give a pretty good picture. I'm gonna I'm gonna peel this uh, this gasketing off of here. I think I see a seam down there somewhere. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna. That's my plan is to put these things over here like this and essentially you know just weld them around. And again, that's the reason I wanted to uh, switch over to the O30 wire. Uh, you know, and, and uh, like I said, um, and every corner, and this applies to every single corner of this thing. Like, let me, and then what I'm going to do also, let's see, can you, this is a bot here, here it is. On the bottom, maybe you can see, like, right here, there's cracks. And this thing is lipped over. So, again, I'll clean this up as best I can, and then I will, uh, I'll weld this, I'll re weld, you know, I'll grind it out a little bit, and, you know, maybe put a couple of, you know, uh, little beads, one on, you know, one and two and three, that kind of stair step thing, just to see if that'll strengthen things up a little bit. Uh, so that's my plan um, for now, is just to, you know, to, to do that. And then I have, I, mean, I don't know if you notice these, these pieces of iron here on my shop. Uh, he actually suggested maybe I string these up and down the, uh, you know, the walls of it from top to bottom to see if that would strengthen it. But uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's going to be much percentage in that, but I'm going to start with this and then like I said I'm going to try and nail these corners back in. Can you? Uh, let's see, maybe you can see. Uh, yeah, here. Here's the top one here. Uh, I guess you, yeah, you can see that, how, how badly, you know, they're all cracked completely through. And of course the outside is obvious. So we're going to start with that and see what that gives me. Uh, like I said, I want to have a little bit more room that I could actually move around in here with this thing in here, but apparently that's not going to be the case. So I'll do my best to show you, you know, what I'm doing as I go. Um, I guess the first thing is going to be, like I said, I'm going to remove this gasket so as not to, you know, to melt it. Um, and then I'm just going to clean, clean this up, you know, Meg loves clean, so I'm going to clean this up as best as I can and uh, start nailing these in. So um, I'll bring you back as I, as I move along. All right, well, I um, guess that's going to be pretty much it for this. Um, this is the, the one side, uh, pretty much done. Um, as you can see, I, I put these angles, you know, these corner angles in, and, you know, I pretty much welded them uh, all around, uh, you know, even down into, down into here. Um, as best I could, anyway, a little tricky to get down in there, uh, to get it clean, anyway. So uh, that's about it. It certainly does seem a whole lot firmer. Uh, it seems like it's, you know, one piece again, as opposed to being, you know, <laughs> separated and all, all parted out there. So uh, yeah, we got it pretty well in. Um, I also, what I did was, uh, let me see, let me get a light here. I also, up in here, you can see, uh, yeah, sure, here. I also uh, put weld up in these corners here. 
Uh, let's see, how do I get the light? I, I guess you can kind of see that. So as not, you know, so as to also to help uh, a little bit with that, uh, to give it a little strength, um, you know, and that seems to help uh, help a lot. Um, so I don't know if they're gonna, I'm gonna do, you know, essentially it's gonna be, um, anyway, uh, essentially it's gonna be a, uh, like I was saying, uh, I guess I'll just duplicate this on the other side. Um, I already did the, I did the two bottoms, let's see, uh, yeah, yeah, it's the light's more trouble than it's worth, I think, it's too bright. Um, but I did the same on the, on the bottoms on both sides, and I shot some primer on them, and I'll do the same here. Uh, I'll just prime this up, I'll put that, uh, that gasket back on, uh, and then that should pretty much be it, I think. I'll do, like I said, I'll just do the same thing on the other side, and then I'll, uh, I'll let them know, you know, if they want to ha have a look and see if they think it really, you know, because originally they wanted me to put, like, these, you know, these pieces of uh, this little two-inch uh, channel iron type stuff. They wanted me to, you know, to, to kind of lace that vertically up and down on here. I just don't know if there's going to be much percentage in that. I, I think this uh, is probably going to... You know, this was seemed to be the way to go, um, and I think this pr will probably be sufficient. Uh, but again, up to them. Uh, so that's going to be about it. I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side, and uh, so that's it. So um, uh, I guess I'm going to say Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, this is the day before Thanksgiving. I think I mentioned that, and uh, so that's it. I just covered the uh, just a little repair I was doing today, and the you know uh, since it's cold and windy and rainy out, and again that whole thing about the uh, the Miller drive rolls there. Just uh, like I say, something I never knew about. Just figured I'd share that. And uh, that's going to be about it. So we're done. Uh, and like I said, wishing everybody uh, a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.